Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, um, Empowering Adjusters to Make Productive SIU Referrals. Um, I am Matt McHenry. I'll be acting as your moderator for the show. Um, so with that, I'll introduce today's speakers. Um, we're, we're excited to have Jorge Luis from Seguros El Roble join us. Um, we have Andrew Bojane from Friss. He is the GM of North America. Um, and we have Jules Ehrlich, who is the Chief Product Officer for ClearSpeed. Um, thanks for joining us, gents. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Jorge, so you can get us started and tell us a little bit about Seguros El Roble um, and how you came about to start adopting some of these fraud technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And let me start by thanking you guys for taking El Roble as a model for this webinar. Um, thanks a lot to, to both, both uh, teams. Uh, so Seguros El Roble is a company based in Guatemala. Um, it was founded 50, 50 years ago. And over the past 12, 10 to 12 years, it uh, became the biggest insurer in, in Guatemala. We are an all lines of business um, um, insurance. Mainly uh, our biggest uh, lines of business are auto and, uh, and now health. Health has been growing a lot and we're number one. We have a 20% market share in, the, in, in Guatemala and um, we, are, we are excited to, to look for new technologies and try to implement them to, to have a positive impact in our operation. Uh, that's who Seguros El Roble is. We are innovating all the time and we're trying to, to, to have our customers always in mind to have and, and to, to, have, to, to give them security, you know, being an insurance company. So we rely a lot, of, a lot on, on technologies like Freeze and ClearSpeed now. So that's that's what Seguros El Roble basically it's an overview, Matt, of what we are. Thanks, Jorge. Maybe you can you can take us through a little bit about how you got to Friss and um, what led you to implementing Friss and how that process was. Yeah, so that's that's taking us back to 2016, uh, October of 2016, and we we found Friss through a uh, referral of one of our leading reinsurers at that time, uh, Minigree. They were the ones that approached us and they told us that they found a very interesting company that was from uh, Holland and they had this, this technology that helped uh, insure, insure insurance companies detect fraud. Uh, and they asked us if we were interested in doing a pilot and try to see how the technology worked uh for us it was it was interesting we we thought well what do we have to lose let's try it uh we met with with Chris, with people from holland they traveled to guatemala and uh, uh we decided that we were going to try the, the technology and this is january of 2017. um that's when we did a kickoff. And uh, the interesting thing of, of, of this, and I'm pretty sure most of the audience has participated in projects uh, involving technology, and, and I'm pretty sure most of them are offered that the project is going to be uh, executed in X amount of time, but that X turns into X times two, times three. And the curious thing about this project with Freeze was the complexity of it because we were we were a Latin American company, uh, Spanish speaking team, uh, with coordination from a Mexican office that that was part of uh, Munich Re, and the other two teams were in Germany, uh, which where Munich is, is uh, Munich Re has its base, and the team from Fris in in Holland. So all the, uh, the and the time zone was different. Some of our team, some of our team members didn't speak English, and some of the team members in in Germany and and in Holland didn't speak Spanish. 
So with all all of that all of that complexity, we ended up having a successful project in in six months, which was the goal, and we went live on 2017. We were we were we we took some time to tweak the the technology and to adjust it to our needs, and uh, and and yeah, that's that it's. I'm still amazed by by the success story of that implementation, and, and I'm happy that everything went out uh, well with that with with Chris. And we are very glad to keep working with with those guys. Right, yeah. so, Andrew, do you want to? Yeah, I, I I mean I gave you the story, but basically the expert on the matter uh, about how the technology works, it's uh, Andrew. So. Why don't you, Andrew? Why don't you share with us the the capabilities of Fris? Well, thank, thanks for calling me the expert. I don't call myself that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> um, no, I, I appreciate all the the kind words, Jorge, and 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 kind of some of the information. It's really interesting, right? Because I joined Fris in uh, 2018, so shortly after the project kicked off with El Roble, and part of the reason I joined was the the huge expansion we were having in the North in North America, in the U.S. and Canada. And hearing you go through that story just kind of reminds me like fraud is a language that everybody speaks, right? Whether you speak English or Spanish or Dutch or whatever language, whatever country you live in, uh, fraud is one of those things that just happens everywhere across all lines of business and, and in every part of the world. So um, I think that really goes back to why Yeroen and Christian, our, our co-founders, started this company about 15 years ago. Um, because it's just the general concept of fraud is, is terrible, right? It affects every single one of us. I imagine every one of us on the call uses insurance. I imagine everyone listening either has car insurance or homeowner's insurance or runs a business like we all do, right? So um, it, it's such a pervasive problem in the US. We we used to talk about it being a $40 billion problem a year. Then the number went up to 80 billion. And now the folks at the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud have a task force out there trying to figure out what that number really is because they know even that number is so small. And that's just one, one portion of insurance in the world. So um, again, that's really what Frisk sets out to accomplish and, and solve as a small piece of the problem in the insurance industry. Um, just kind of a, a high level overview, really what we seek to do is take every single insurance claim that comes into a carrier and give that a full and complete and unbiased screening and then come up with some sort of indication that you can use to understand what to, to do next with that claim. So really the idea here is twofold. When you, when you talk about fraud, right? Of course, that's not something everybody wants to talk about every day, but when you talk about fraud, you want to find those claims as quickly as possible and, and isolate those and, and send them on a certain track to do what you want to do with them, right? investigate them, determine if they're appropriate to pay or not. Um, and more importantly, you want to segment out those good claims because the reality is 90 plus percent of claims are good, honest, well-intentioned claims. And that's exactly what insurance is here for. No customer wants to wait, wants to beg for their, for their payout. Um, so we do that through a variety of ways. And even just in the past three years that I've been here, I've, I've seen this evolve so much. It's, it's really incredible what this type of technology can do. Um, and at the most simple level, you're basically just taking in all the information that's available for that claim, uh, information that's you know called in or submitted through the app, information you have available through the policies, uh, potentially third-party data that you can bring in to supplement information available with the claims. And you're running this through different indicators, different fraud models, different AI models that can start to pick out things that maybe your experienced folks would pick out. Maybe they'd miss it. Uh, maybe they'd, they'd pick it certain days or maybe, you know, your, your really good claims adjuster is off today and, and the, the claims start to slip through the cracks. So um, we can start to find those if you sort of imagine all of the best brain power in the room looking at every single claim every single time. That's like a starting point, right? That's the most basic thing that our technology can do. But then you can start to apply some AI models to that as well and start to recognize patterns that could be far too complex for the average person to pick up on. Um, and then really start to understand the nuances behind these claims, some emerging fraud schemes that may be happening that look really clean on the surface, but when you start to understand the, the reality behind them, um, you can really start to pick out some interesting things that the average person wouldn't catch. So. Uh, happy to go into more details. I don't want to make it a sales pitch or, or go into the architecture about it, but that's sort of who we are in a nutshell. And 
And again, just to bring it back to the highest level, we believe in honest insurance. It's what everybody on this call deserves, and, and that's what we're trying to help the industry accomplish. And super proud to, to be a strong partner for El Roble and, and others who might be listening, and definitely appreciate the feedback, Jorge. Thank you. I think it's probably a good, good time to bring it back around. Jorge, you guys weren't, you implemented FRIS, you had a lot of success there, um, but you weren't done adding to your, your tech stack when it comes to um, fraud detection technology. So can you talk a little bit about how you came about ClearSpeed and, and that process? Yeah, the thing with ClearSpeed was was a little bit different. We we went to Las Vegas. I mean, seeing the, the success we were having with FRIS, we knew that there were more technologies out there that we could apply. So we went to a, a Las Vegas event. This is on the October of 2019. And uh, we found uh, a bunch of new technologies. I mean, like, I don't know, like a hundred opportunities out there. We came back to Guatemala and we started uh, choosing what to do. Uh, I mean, we, which one to, to, to try, you know? And the only one that, that we ended up implementing uh, was ClearSpeed. And, and it, for us, it was like magic because the, the offering was like, uh, there is this technology that can tell you if a person, by answering a few questions of uh, yes or no answers, could tell you that if the subject was being accurate of, on what we, he was saying or not. I mean, Jules is going to go more into the details of how, how does that work. But when we heard that, we were like, how does, how does this work? And, and we immediately wanted to try it. And, and ClearSpeed offered us a proof of concept, which was painless and very quick. So we said, well, why not? Let's try it. And, and we did try it. Uh, it was successful. And then we immediately put it into, into, into production. Um, this is 2000 and, uh, and 2020, in January 2020. That's when we, we started working with, with ClearSpeed. So now, um, and the, the cool part of this is that this is pre-pandemic when we, when we met with uh, ClearSpeed. Uh, and we did this implementation with um, American, American InsurTech. Um, Zoom was not so popular at that time, or, or Meets, or whatever, all those technologies for, for video conferencing. So we did all uh, via phone, mail, WhatsApp, communicating that way. Um, and, and the curious part, and maybe you, you can tell uh, Alex Martin about it, but Nobody from ClearSpeed went to Guatemala to, to do the implementation, which is, it, it, it was amazing because it was done remotely. And uh, it was done also on time. We were very happy with it. And we renewed our contract for, 20, 20, for 2022 now because we, we have been using the technology um, very, we found it to be very easy to implement and the impact is very high for us. So uh, I'm, as well, I'm, I'm not an, an, the expert on, the, on, the techno on that technology. I, I'm the user and for me, it's still kind of magic. I cannot explain it. So maybe Jules, you can help the audience understand what, what uh, ClearSpeed is all about. Yeah, yeah, happy to. Um, so, it's a very different kind of solution. Um, pairs up well with a lot of other technologies in the ecosystem like Frisk, but it's a voice, voice analytics technology. And what it does is it can accurately pinpoint the risk of fraud in speech, just as a high level, in speech. And, and the way we do it today is we provide our customers with very short voice questionnaires. Two to four questions. So yes, yes or no answers. Any language. 
rate on the results that we provide our customers is north of 97 percent. The types of questions you might ask, I'll give you some examples in a minute, but the most important thing is that there is no data. We actually do not know who the caller is. Um, it's, it's, it's a completely unbiased solution. It's completely automated. There's no human touch. Somebody put through to a, you know, on a phone call or a mobile app, um, gets put through to a questionnaire, and they answer the questions in, I don't know, or a, how long it's taking, but somewhere between two and five minutes, depending on the number of questions you have, and you're done. Caller puts the phone down, and then we send back the results. And I'll, I'll tell you what we, how we do that in a moment. Um, as examples, I know for motor vehicle claims, you know, a couple of questions, you know, that, that some of our customers use it. Were you driving at the time of the accident? Yes, yes or no? Uh, were you using a mobile phone? And we are scoring, this is, there's no biometrics here, no voice stress, no, no, no NLP, you know, natural language processing. There's not lie detection. This is, you can almost, it's almost akin to like a metal detector at an airport. People stand in line, they come through. The metal detector has no idea whether you intended to carry metal or not. Um, it doesn't make a decision about whether you fly or not. If you do have metal on you, all that happens is an alert goes off. And that's what clear speed is. It's an alerting technology. We score the, the responses per question. This is very interesting as well, is that you're now getting insight potentially into the part of the claim that could be at risk. Low risk, clear to pay. Just straight through. High risk, you just like a metal detector. You follow up. Somebody you know, decides what to do, or it gets combined. Our, our risk score gets combined uh, into something like FRIS that just informs their recommendation even more so. So um, you, you, no, nobody uses our technology to deny claims. That's all. So uh, it just gives you a, a, a clear look at what part of the claim might be fraudulent. So you know, to net it out, it's a very fast, very accurate way to understand claims risk. Um, and I can get a little bit more into the science about how it all works uh, a little later in the call if people are interested. Um, but I, I think that's a, that's a summary, or a Thank you. Jules, if I could just kind of follow up, I love that analogy that you used with the metal detector, right? I haven't, hadn't heard you say that before, but we, we think very similarly about Friss, right? Because could you imagine if you went to get on a plane and you had like a, a knee implant, right? Or a fake hip that was made out of metal and they said, nope, you can't fly, right? The, the thing beeped, you can't fly. That would be terrible. And I think that's a concern that a lot of folks have with technology in insurance, right? If you can be confident that there's no metal on that person to stick with the analogy, probably no risk in them getting on the plane, right? If there is metal, look a little further, ask a couple of questions. And we do the same thing at Frisk. We always tell our clients, if we produce a red score, a high score, a suspicion alert, you absolutely should not automatically tell that person their claim is denied, but it gives you insights, right? Open up the bag, take a look, ask a couple of extra questions. I think that's a really important concept. Yeah. In any event, El Roble has been just incredibly insightful for us. Uh, they were one of our first insurance customers, and, and uh, we are delighted by the success you're having there, Jorge Luis. So thank you very much for, for everything you, you, you've helped us with as well, because we provide a lot of great insights. You're on mute. We hear that a couple times each day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Word of the century. But now that we, we've heard a little bit about what um, Frist does, what ClearSpeed does, and got some of the backstory from you, Jorge, do you mind uh, taking us through some of the specific use cases that you've really seen these two technologies combined together to make an impact for um, detecting fraud, you know, improving the, the claims experience overall? No. Jorge, you are still on mute. Let me see if I can unmute you. I am not able to. 
you stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can uh, maybe in the meantime, will you guys? Thank you. But it, it said yeah. that the organizer mute, muted me and I couldn't unmute myself. So <laughs> we got you back. Sorry. Now we're back. We are back. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the way we use um, um, ClearSpeed and Freeze, um, as Jules mentioned, we are, not, we are not denying claims based on either the Freeze score or uh, the, the result from the call or, or, or the result from ClearSpeed. That only, that's only a tool for us to, to, to tell us, okay, this is, there is something fishy here. You should look into this. And as Andrew mentioned before, more than 90% of the people go through the expressway, for example. I mean, they, they are green and, 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 and there is no need to apply clear speed to, to those planes. So uh, actually the technology helps us expedite service for for more than 90 percent of the customers and and we are focusing only on those customers that um score high on freeze and they get a a, a red and a orange score and then we apply um clear speed uh, not not everyone is thinking of committing fraud every day and i don't think there is some well there are some people that that that's the, their way of living. Most of the people on any given day, they're not thinking, no, I'm going to commit fraud today. But these two technologies have helped us not only on, on fraud cases, but um, for example, policies that uh, do not cover underage driving um, or people driving under the influence and they had a, a car accident and they get involved into the, in, in, in an accident because of alcohol um, or their license expired and they, they are driving with an expired license. So all these cases that we, we used to pay before, um, we, are, we are having now the capability of, of you know, saying to the customer, hey, listen, you, you had your license expired six months ago and, and the, 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 the cover, there is no coverage for that. Um, we also use it for, for special cases. For example, we apply um, for every total loss claim or and theft claims. Um, we, we apply the, the, both technologies in those, in those instances. Uh, we are using it um, so the, to, to come back and say the technology is helping us to not only detect fraud, but it's also helping us to have identify claims that we shouldn't be paying. They are not fraud, but, but the, the company shouldn't be paying for, for, for a policy that doesn't pay underage driving and, and the 15 year old gets into a car accident. So we're denying those claims. Thanks for, thanks to, to this technology that, that we're using. I don't know if that answer, that answers a little bit of what you're, you were asking or you want me to comment into something else. No, I, I think that's, it's great. I mean, it really shows how the two technologies are actually giving you insights on where, uh, where to look and how to trigger the right investigation when it's needed. So maybe maybe quickly I, I I share with you how we use it. I, when we we use clear freeze for for all the claims, as Andrew said, that, that you have the, the the capability of of going through all the claims. So all of our claims um, have a freeze score, and if the freeze score is red or or uh, orange, we and and either if it's a total loss or a, or, a, or a theft claim, we apply um, clear speed, only in those cases. We're not applying clear speed to, to all of the claims. We do apply freeze to all of the claims, and then when freeze alerts us, we activate uh, clear speed. That is, that is the way we are doing it, um, and it's, it's helping us a lot. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about 
you know, where what's what's the direction that you're heading, uh, expanding beyond possibly auto claims? Um, is there other opportunities that you're considering applying, both for us, ClearSpeed, one or the other, and different different scenarios? Sure. Yeah, I, I think one of the measurements of of success for any for any for any technology would be if you keep using it, uh, and and we we're we're using it. I mean, our intention is to keep using both technology technologies. They do not replace one another. They are, they complement each other. That's that's our opinion. And uh, not only are we going to use it in auto, we are we are expanding and we are planning to use it in health for life and for underwriting, for example. A lot, a lot of people, when you ask them, uh, do you smoke? For a, for example. If you are asking for a life policy, and one of the first questions is, is do you smoke? And and most of the people are going to to tell you, no, I don't. Uh, but in many instances, that is not exactly true, right? So, uh, in those kind of cases, we we will be using um, clear speed. Um, we are also on a pilot right now with Fris. The expertise of Fris is auto. But we were so happy with the results of Auto that we, we proposed to them that, that if they wanted to try and expand into health, and we are doing that as well. So we are in the process of, of having actually both, both technologies um, implemented in, in another line of business, which is, is health. And I was telling my friends from, uh, from I was telling John Cedar with my, my very good friend from, from uh, from clear speed, uh, it, another case use could be in the bank for for HR human resource human resources in banks are, are very careful of who to hire and for example a questionnaire for new hirees in the bank would be another another use case um, that's my take and I'm pretty sure or Jules and Andrew um, have their opinions of what other use cases they can have for for Fris and ClearSpeed. Yeah, and I, and I think it's a good a good point that you, you know talking a little bit about what the future holds for uh, Seguro Cell Roble. Um, but it's always interesting to get a perspective from the actual technologies of what their future landscape looks like and how they can impact. Um, maybe it's more than just auto claims, other areas, um, and then maybe evolving technologies as we go along. And Andrew, do you want to take a second and? Kind of let us know what's going on in Frisk, what the future holds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, in general, first of all, it's it's great to work with customers like Jorge who are always pushing us, right? Because that's always what makes things better. So again, thank you. Um, and, you know, there's base level stuff we're doing, right? We're expanding into other lines of business. We're always looking at interesting uh, data sources, right? There's new data sources coming out all the time that might contribute to this. But I think, you know, a, a, a big sort of concept that's been floating around our team lately is is like the adjuster of the future, right? And I think most people can relate to how hard it is to hire people. You have a lot of people in this industry who are starting to age out, right? The workforce is, is getting a little bit older and whenever people leave, you lose that expertise. And we've long thought of our, our product as something that doesn't necessarily replace people. It enhances their ability to do things. Um, and, and we're not looking to replace people, right? But I think there's a point at which you have to be able to transfer that knowledge and that's getting harder and harder to do with people alone. So one of the things that I see our, our product starting to do and, and really doing a lot better well into the future is helping to sort of augment that knowledge base, right? So the AI can start to recognize even better and better the patterns that your experienced adjusters would, but on top of that, knowing what to do with that, right? And and it's a really good segue into clear speed, right? So you might say, for example, there's a X percent, you know, 90% likelihood that this is this type of fraud scheme, right? This is a staged accident, let's say. Okay, well, if it's a staged accident, what do you do, right? Again, you're not just gonna automatically deny that claim. You might wanna ask more questions. Well, what questions do you ask? Do you just come straight out and ask, was this a staged accident? Or do you go at it at a more nuanced way? And I think in the past, when you have carriers who are really strong in fraud fighting, they'd say, oh yeah, you know, Matt is our, our greatest investigator. We're going to send this one to him. Well, Matt might not be around 10 years from now, right? So we need to have these technologies be able to enhance and augment this. Um, and I, I think that's a big focus for us moving into the future. 
Yeah, it really goes back to that, even the title of the webinars, empowering adjusters to, to make the right decisions and how to move forward with claims. Yeah. How about you, Jules? What's going on with ClearSpeed in, in uh, the future? A couple of things, actually. I'll just follow up on, on a quick point that Jorge Luis made. So, uh, our, you know, we initially kicked, kicked off this technology and insurance um, all around exactly the process that, that he described, more on the back end of the process as opposed to the front end. A lot of customers have started that way and have now actually moved ClearSpeed to the front um, so with, with FNOL and are feeding that score into technologies in order to inform the technology ahead of the total score being computed. Um, you know, some will just use it as a clear to pay, but it, it's changing the way it's being used in insurance. And, and now that we're sort of closely aligned with Frisia, for example, the combined solution becomes incredibly interesting uh, to customers. So, so that's one. Um, what happened last year is that um, we were successfully deploying all these questionnaires all over the place for very many, many use cases, and I'm happy to talk about them. Um, you mentioned the HR, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in, 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 in human capital um, being used for sports integrity and all other kinds of things, but our primary focus is, in, is insurance as a sort of just side side use cases. But what happened is that customers came to us and they said, is there any way that we can enhance the technology to not just do yeses and nos? Could you, could you score the risk? Could you assess risk in an open-ended question, in unstructured speech? And the fact is we actually didn't know. We just simply did not know. Uh, very difficult problem to solve. And so we combined with some insurance, some banks, uh, call centers in different languages all over the world. We received a whole lot of data from them, conversational data, and we discovered, wow, this technology works great in unstructured speech. And we're gonna put that out um, in two phases over the course of the next year. I think this is just immediate, the only thing that really matters. We're gonna have a hybrid product that combines yeses and nos and open-ended questions so that insurance customers can ask exactly the questions that, that our roadblock is asking, but also at the end or somewhere in the middle, just say, hey, can you describe to me what happened? And then we can score each question plus the specific time intervals within the, um, the open-ended question and provide a much richer set of data to people and in a much more natural experience. If someone comes into a call center, hey, can you submit your plan? Sure, answer these questions for us. So before it even goes to a human agent, before it goes anywhere, customers are interested in just gathering the data, it gets transcribed and goes into, into the claim system and gets scored by Chris and us and everybody else and so it's just an interesting path that we're following here, but um, this ability to combine the two question sets is where we're going next. So Matt, I think is sort of about something in the next quarter or so. Yeah. And Jorge Luis, I think uh, you're aware of it, and I think it will be a great, a great way to test it over there. We'll be glad to to test it. Just let us know when it's ready. <laughs> You know, you know of our willingness to try new stuff. I do. Thank you. It's not, not you. just from what Andrew said. You, you are absolutely willing to try everything, and it's it's, <laughs> it's a huge amount of insight. So thank you. That kind of leads me to my next my next question, Jorge. Is there other fraud detection technologies or other technologies in general insurance that you guys are looking to adopt in the future, or what's the what's the path forward for El Roble? Well, Matt, it's it, it's not like we are. I mean, we're constantly on the look look for for new stuff. Uh, but fraud. It, it, talking about fraud right now, I think we are we're happy with what we have around fraud, unless I don't know some some very new technology comes along and and we find about it. But it's not like we are actively looking. Um, if something comes along, it would be great. Um, but no, to be honest, we are not we are not looking for something new at the moment uh, in the in the part for fraud. 
right. in other parts of the business we are constantly trying to to look for new stuff and see what helps and and yeah but the on, on the fraud part we are we are completely satisfied for the moment yeah well it definitely seems in hearing from both Jules, Andrew, and your story on how, how the two technologies have helped uh, Seguro So Roble um, do a lot of things around claims fraud and optimization of the claims process, that it's uh, it's really not a one solution fits all thing for insurance. It's really about a tech stack or an ecosystem of technologies. I don't, is there anything that you guys want to say, Andrew, Jules, or even Jorge, that kind of drives home that point that um, it's not a one plus one um, equals two type of thing. It's more of a one plus one equals three. You covered it pretty well, Andrew. You want to add anything more to that? Okay. Yeah, That's I'm not that I'm not that good at math, so one plus one <laughs> equals three doesn't compete. <laughs> but, um, no, it's absolutely necessary. I mean, we any conversation around insurance these days and technologies, any of the conferences you go to, I, I think AI used to be the big buzzword, and and now I think it's partnerships and ecosystems and and how we build this all together because I, I think most carriers have spent the better part of the last few years just sort of breaking everything and, and thinking about how they can fix it, right? Adding new technologies, trying new things. Um, and I think it's like anything else in life. I had a conversation with my my family yesterday and someone in my family was upset that kids aren't learning cursive these days, right? Okay, well, maybe that's important, maybe it's not, but we're also not asking people to fax us things anymore, right? If, if you said you needed to fax me something, I, I, I can't do that. I don't have a fax machine in my house, right? The way we did business in the in the past is is totally changing, and and we have to keep up. And you look at innovative insurers like Seguros El Roble, and and looking to adopt new technologies. Right, Jorge, you mentioned to me that you didn't even think you had a problem with this uh, before you started implementing our technologies, and then you started to do it. So, oh wow, this is you know this is really important. You have a hundred different technologies you can adopt. You have to you know start with one, right? And see where it leads you. Um, so I think. You know, it's going to be incredible every time I go to these big shows, you see more and more vendors, a, a couple drop out each time, but so many new technologies that are out there. And I, I, I can't imagine somebody's tech stack, whether it's for fraud or otherwise, would look the way it does today a year from now, certainly not three years from now. So I'm, I'm super excited to see the changes. Yeah. I, I can... Go ahead, Jules. Oh, no, very, very, that, that's comprehensive. It's exactly what's going to happen. And it's what's happening. I mean, everybody is... You've got to have a, an ecosystem of, of partnerships and tightly fitting um, technologies to, to people are impatient. You know, the customers need to get paid or not paid as the case may be, but, but things need to happen. And in fact, there's there's a whole set of laws that have now been implemented, uh, certainly in Europe, around the exact time frame for processing a motor vehicle claim, for example, or a cell phone claim or any claim. And so I think speed. Uh, is what is actually ultimately pushing people to really, you know, improve the customer experience and whatever else they're doing, whether it's through a mobile app or some other means, it actually doesn't matter, but there isn't a single thing that is driving all this. It's it's this combination. It's it's, it's really great. It's great. Really amazing to see. The last two years, especially, just phenomenal. It's it's funny uh, that Andrew mentions uh, that well, and he says he's not very good at math, but I'm pretty sure he is. Uh, and and Andrew, uh, preparing for this webinar, you asked me, well, why don't you share the numbers before you were using this technology, and then the numbers with the technology? And I, and I, I came back to Andrew and said, well, Andrew, we we didn't we didn't have numbers before the technology, and and I was. I was trying to remember, and I remember the meeting, the first meeting with with, the, with your team, and they asked us, "Do you have statistics of of uh, fraud?" And, and and we went back, and we went back with the with the people that that were supposed to be catching fraud and having all these uh, statistics, and they said, "People with 20 plus years in the company working in claims," and they were like, uh, "I don't remember when was the last time we." we had a case of fraud. And the funny thing about that is like five years later, I, I have the numbers here and um, I'm not going to go year by year, but but I mean, we have 72, 77, 51, 63 uh, cases 
proven fraud. This is not this is not driving under the influence or I mean this is people that were trying trying to cheat the company, uh, proven fraud, and that amount that amount of dollars it's uh, it's a, a million and a half U.S. dollars in in those 200 cases. And we, to give you an idea, we uh, process around 30,000 cases annually. Uh, and, this, and these 200 cases, it's, it's for the five years of, of utilizing the, the technologies of very low numbers of, on, on cases, but very high impact, uh, monetary impact. And that's that's for me it's that is where where the 31 percent roi comes from it's a very uh, low investment for a very 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 high return wow impressive thanks i think we're at a point right now where um it would be good to open it up for um for any questions from the audience um if you're out there and you have some questions for either andrew jules or jorge um Go ahead and submit them in the questions tab. We have a few that have, have come in already, um, so I think I'll, I'll start with those. Um, the first first question that I have is is to you, Jorge. Um, how is it that uh, adjusters are determining the type of questions to ask uh, the claimants when it comes to clear speed? Uh, yeah, it's it's not the, it, the the questions are not determined by the adjusters. This is something that we do um, alongside the team from ClearSpeed to determine which questions to ask, which are the, the proper questions that we should be asking. We, we are taking the best practices from ClearSpeed in other markets. So that's, what, what, that's how we came about the, the questions we are asking at the moment. We have only two questionnaires. Each are four questions and one questionnaire is for, for total loss. And the other one is for for um, in in general, you know, it's like uh, the one that covers the the driving under the influence and, and and those questions. But it's basically four set two two sets of four questions each. The the adjuster doesn't decide which questions to to ask. It's predetermined. Also, also, Matt, what's happened over the last couple of years is from doing so many of these. We have a pretty good library across all insurance lines now. And so, you know, when someone starts, they want to do motor, hey, here's, here's the 10 highest ranked bus success kind of questions that we have that people use that a roble, etc. everyone's used and people select from those. So the actual getting going is very, very quick for the most part, unless people want to customize things to their brand and very specific around the exact type of claim. It's, you know, pretty easy process. Oh, okay. So there's a there's a couple of questions coming out. I'm trying to sift through um, and kind of spread it out a little bit. But um, Andrew, can you maybe go into a little bit of detail about how the frisk indicators actually work? Yeah. What, um, so when you talk about indicators, you, you may be thinking similar to kind of what was just discussed, right? How do you ask certain questions? So uh, at, at the most simplistic level, an indicator from Frisk would be similar to what you would instinctually be looking at as a, as a claims adjuster or, or perhaps an investigator. So uh, a real simple one I think everybody would understand is, let's say, for example, a claim comes in within a certain period after a, the policy was started or the policy was changed, right? Maybe somebody lowered their deductible and then two days later submitted a claim. I think we all agree that's highly suspicious, right? So that would be an indicator, a really simple one that would flag within Frisk, um, much like what ClearSpeed is doing then, we've we've had this experience over 15 years, multiple lines of business, 50 plus countries. So we do the same thing, right? We've got this extensive library of these built out um, and then a, a customer may tweak them, right? You may have a slightly different appetite than the next carrier on, on certain different things. And then you could start to layer those on too, right? So one one thing alone you know it's entirely possible that i go and make an adjustment to my policy tomorrow and have an accident on saturday right it's not impossible it may be suspicious um but maybe when you start to pair those with some other things right we can start to dig a lot deeper with with ai and network analytics for example and say um you know let's say andrew and and, and jules have an accident right well jules lives in 
California and Andrew lives in Arizona, like, the, you know, maybe that looks totally innocent, right, on the outside, but maybe they lived together in the past or they have, you know, some sort of relationship that we can tie together with a phone number or an email address or something. Um, so we can we can start to look at the really simple stuff. We can start to layer it together. We can start to build on those patterns and and find things that on the surface look totally normal. Um, if if you have a second, I'll I'll give you a quick example where we're starting to see an increase in fraud that involves rental vehicles and rideshare vehicles. And again, on the surface, this looks really normal, right? People rear-end each other all the time. It's a fact of life. Um, and it looks really simple. You know, it's a rideshare vehicle, a rental vehicle. Nobody knows each other, but it turns out that these are actually fraud rings doing this. They're pre-planning this. Somebody's renting a vehicle and, and taking out coverage on that vehicle. They're telling somebody else within that ring, okay, this is, you know, go ahead and get in the the, the Uber or the Lyft or what have you, right? And and uh, and we'll arrange something to happen at this point in time in this place. Um, you wouldn't think of that if you didn't know to look for that, but our our solutions are able to start to recognize these patterns and, and flag them. And again, going back to, you know, to the question of the future, how do we then, you know, step one is identify it, right? And step two is how do we deal with it? Start to list out what we think these suspicions are, how we found it, why we think this is an issue, and then what do you do with that? What questions do you ask? Who do you route it to? Um, and these are things we're, we're already starting to see working and, and quite successfully. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, oh, question. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, so the, there's another question coming in that, that's to you, Jorge. Have you, as the insurer, actually experienced pushback from your claimants when they have to go through these technologies? Um, or has, has there been little resistance to going through the process, um, especially if it's positioned as something that's helping them get through the claims process faster? A very low resistance, actually. Uh, I can I can tell you that for for any customer, uh, freeze is completely invisible. They don't they don't know that we are getting a score from them from 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 the claim they are placing. Uh, so no, in in the part of um, freeze, it's completely tr transparent. In ClearSpeed, I have only heard of one client that that was um, he was. Uh, he was not happy that we wanted to 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 give the questionnaire to his son. It was his son was not uh, under age. He was he was like 20, 20 years or twenty plus years, but his father didn't want him to take the the test. And, and we were like, why not? I mean, all of the other clients are are agreeing to it. So this only raises questions. You know, it's like why why do you, you don't want to go through answering four simple questions uh but n honestly not no pushback at all um uh, that, that i can that i can i i asked the or the team and they didn't say anything um so no it's very very straightforward okay another question that kind of goes off the the heels of that one is, is you know is there any concern about um, bias when it comes to these type of AI technologies. Um, how do how do you, Andrew at Fris and you, Jules at ClearSpeed, deal with um, those concerns uh, that people may have? So I think there's two sides of it, and to to get into the details, you'd have to talk to one of our data science folks because that's way above my knowledge level in, in terms of how some of these AI models look at it. But certainly. On, on that side, right? You want to be careful. You want to monitor the the performance of anything that's driven by artificial intelligence to make sure there's there's no bias coming out of it. The flip side of that too is inherently a solution like ours can eliminate bias. So if you think about the old way of of doing business, some adjusters may ask certain questions, others may not. Right? They may have their own bias for whatever reason. For, for any number of reasons for somebody who may be calling, right? The way they sound or any attributes of a person that they may have some prejudice against, for example. Um, I think that's been a problem in the industry for years and a solution like ours screens every single claim exactly the same way every single time. Um, so you, you don't have to think about that. A another thing that we often hear is that 80% of investigations come from 20% of adjusters, right? So you've got a handful of really good adjusters who just know how to sniff out a suspicious case and send that up and, and the other ones don't. And I think 
whether it's intentional or not, there's there's bias included in that that you want to try to eliminate. And 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 then of course, right, the the same concept that anytime you're going to have what might be considered an adverse decision on a claim, you still want to run that by somebody, give them access to the to the data to understand what decision they want to make and why, and and be able to support that and defend that decision. Yeah, for clear speed, it's sort of the lack of bias is at the the core of the solution. Um, again, you can't identify someone uh, from a yes or no response, you know, definitively. We don't care who's speaking. We don't care about pitch or tone or how someone says C or yes or no or in any language. There's no human in the loop at all. The whole system is completely automated. Um, it's almost a bit like a heartbeat. Everybody's heart beats in a similar way, and there's some anomalies and things. But it doesn't matter whether you're in, you know, in Singapore, or Somalia, or San Francisco. It, it just doesn't make any difference. The way that this, the system works is, it's not actually really listening to what a person says. It takes, it's almost like a burst of energy. It takes that energy, it converts it into a completely universal data model. Because we are looking for the the presence or absence of of risk characteristics in the voice. You might say, well, what are those? And why are they not different for, you know, for, for this gender or, or that race, as the case may be? They're identical. They are universal. And what happens is that um, we take those characteristics, we convert them into, into data, if we, we find them, we convert them into data, and then we score it. And every single response is managed independently of any other responses on that call or across the entire landscape of people that have ever answered. So we're not comparing um, one response to someone else's. We have a, a model that has been proven over sort of many years. And, and it's, you know, it doesn't matter what culture, what language, what person. And so it, it's a completely unbiased solution. Uh, it's, really an important part of what we do is almost anonymity that that's sort of one of the benefits that that companies customers get from us is is this complete objectivity in in assessing a claim so yeah, that's uh, that answers the question you met yeah it does that's next question and i know we, we kind of touched on it Jorge. you definitely you know talked a little bit about this, but somebody has a question of, are all claims vetted by both ClearSpeed and Fris, or are there certain trigger points um, that, that indicate that you should do one or the other or both on, on given claims? Yeah, um, not all claims are used uh, with both technologies. I mean, we, as I mentioned before, it's 100% of the claims go through Fris, right. and a portion of those, very small, very small portion of those we apply clear, clear speed. So it, 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 it depends on the rules. However, uh, and, and this Jules mentioned something about this, um, we are in the process of trying to see how we put clear speed at the door. And, and you guys made the analogy of, of the airplane and I, I, don't, I don't like to fly. I have to, but I don't, I don't like to get into airplanes, but I like to get into parties. And, and if you if you take that analogy uh, as as a club, you have you I mean, when you have somebody in the party and and it's too late, right? I mean, what do you do to take them out of the party? It's 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 uh, so it, it's too late when you already have the claim. But if you at the door put a bouncer and you know that this guy possibly is going to cause trouble inside the party, so you won't allow him in. Um, that's why we are we are using now we put into production uh, freeze underwriting to have another another tool to the, try to detect fraud before the claim and we are also in the process of of working with ClearSpeed and see how we can use the technology in in the same door. So we're going to have two bouncers, not not just one. <laughs> I don't know if that answers the, the question, Matt. Yeah, that answers the question for sure. Um, I think the next question 
uh, goes into a little bit of that. There's somebody asking about, is there already or is there in the future going to be some type of integration between Frisk and ClearSpeed or is this something that you're going to use separately um, as two separate technologies? That's the, the question. I, I, could, I could take that one. I, you know, I think, let's just be honest how we got to this point, right? We were at ITC, uh, what was it, October or November of last year, so not even that many months ago, and, and Jorge comes up to us, I think we we're at a dinner, and he said, do you know these ClearSpeed guys? I, don't, yeah, I think I've heard of them before, let's chat, right? And then we had the conversation that we just had on this webinar. This is what we're, this is what we're doing with you. This is what we're doing with them. This is really incredible. And and, and again, I think it's just a sign of the times, right? All these technologies that some of them are new, some of them have been around for a while, um, and how do they best work together? And I, I think anybody who's worked on a real technology project or, or works for a technology company knows it can be difficult, right? There's a lot of opportunities out there, but you have to just kind of analyze what makes the most sense. And you know, I think, I think the folks at ClearSpeed, you probably have the same goal that we do, right? We we want to bring as much possible value to our customers as we can. And anytime there's a, a way to integrate and enhance what we do, enhance what you do, and ultimately enhance the experience for our customers and even more ultimately for their customers, right? So if there's a, a chance to do that, why not? You know, I'd say to follow on from that, there's sort of two main points. One is, to what Horo said earlier, that if, if Clear speed is earlier in the process, it feeds something like Frisk, which has a much more you know, comprehensive scoring system of many other points of data. Uh, that integration is easier. What's not so easy, but I think will come out of this, and somebody brought it up yesterday, is that you get a result out of Frisk, and you now need to ask a specific set of questions, as opposed to a generalized set of questions. And can Fris pump out to clear speed? Hey, this is the type of risk we see here. This is this fraud scheme, as Andrew mentioned earlier. We're seeing this fraud scheme appear in this claim. Please ask the questions related to this fraud scheme right. on the call. And so, just being able to take the output of Fris's results and produce the exact questions that are needed to, to ask that person or that group of people uh, would be a great integration point. So we'll start talking about those. The basic integrations, I think, between our two systems will happen pretty quickly, but that one needs a little bit of, of, of thought. But I, I love that, that idea. It was just, I think, someone in your team, Andrew, brought it up. It was really interesting. We had a, a presentation at ITC where we, we talked to a serial arsonist who is now quite remorseful for what he's done set several dozen fires over several years. And he said, through all of this, nobody ever asked me, did you set the fire? Right? It seems so obvious. No one ever asked him, did you set? I mean, we don't need Friss or ClearSpeed for that, right? We just need somebody to say, did you set the fire? You know? So yeah. you can definitely see at scale how, how an example like that could be easily prevented with, with any combination of these technologies. It's really exciting. Matt? Yeah, thank you. I, that's all the questions that I have coming up right now, um, but I do want to turn it back over to you. We have just a couple seconds left before we, we um, give everybody back their time, but is there any closing remarks, Jorge, anything that you would like to close up with? Yeah, I, I, would, like to, I would like to close with this. I don't know if you have heard about the six word stories, and if, if, you, if you were to ask me about the, this story, I will phrase this, this story about Frisk and ClearSpeed in, in six words, which is uh, Frisk and ClearSpeed are amazing technologies. That will be my, my, my story. If I, if I have to tell, and, and you tell me, tell your story in six, six words, that will be it. And I also want to, to take the, every, every story has heroes and villains. And in, in my opinion, the heroes of this story are the teams that help those implementations, the team at Frisk, the team at ClearSpeed. I want to thank you all guys. And I want to take the opportunity to take the, the, the thank my team at the Roble, especially Minor Garcia, who is the leader of, of Auto, and, and Alvaro Arreaza, which uh, are, those two guys are, are the, the real heroes of, of this success story. I'm just honored to have the opportunity to tell the story. But the ones that have make all the work and everything happen are those two guys. And um, yeah, that, that will be all. Thank you again for the invitation. 
Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for jumping on here and giving this webinar. Um, thank you everybody who attended the webinar um, and all your great questions and, and your attention. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, before we close up, I just wanted to mention that both ClearSpeed and Frist are going to be at the Insurance Fraud Management um, Conference down in Orlando, Florida in the beginning of March. Um, so if you happen to be going there, uh, you want to learn more about what we do and how we're going to be working together uh, in the future, uh, stop by our booths and, and uh, say hello and continue the conversation. Uh, with that, um, thanks again to everyone and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, um, everybody. Thanks for hosting, Matt. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.